Zara can now create smooth flash animations like this, and it takes just a few seconds. To show you how easy it is, I'll create a basic animation from scratch. Zara does not use a timeline, as you see with some animation software. Instead, it takes a more traditional animator's approach, and one that we feel is much simpler. You simply create a series of key frames, or snapshots, of your animation, and Zara does the rest. To start, click this New Animation button, and you will see a new set of animation controls appear. First I'll create a simple rectangle to use as a background. This will remain static during our animation. Now I'll enter some text, which I'll animate. I can draw just about anything I like using Zara's drawing tools, text, shapes and photos. The key to all Zara flash animations is that objects that are to be animated must be named, which you do with this button. Give it any name you like. The object will retain the name even when copied to a new frame. This is our start position, our first keyframe. We now create a second keyframe by clicking this button. This copies everything on the document to the new frame. The core principle of Zara's flash animation is that it automatically generates all the in-between frames in the flash movie. The result is a smooth animation from one keyframe to the next. So on the second frame I want the text enlarged. So I just use the normal Zara facilities to enlarge the text, like this. And I'll also recolour the text to be bright blue. To show the keyframes in your animation there is a frame gallery which you can display with this button. This window can be docked to the side of the screen by dragging, like this. As you can see, this shows that we have two frames. The animation always plays from the top down. Just click on the frame to show the state of the animation at that point in time. So you can see frame 1 has the original text, and frame 2 the enlarged text, coloured blue. To preview this animation, just click the preview button here, and you can see this animates from the first keyframe to the second. Very simple, very quick. The speed at which it animates is controlled by the display period. You can see here it takes half a second to move from frame 1 to 2, and then half a second on frame 2, before it cycles around the animation again. To slow the animation down, we just alter the properties of this frame 1 which I can do with the Animation Properties dialog from this button. So I'll set the display period for the first keyframe to be 2 seconds. Now if I preview, you can see the animation takes longer. Zara is generating all the in-between frames in the animation, so you can see it does not just enlarge, but it also changes the colour as well. Suppose I want the text to animate the other way, starting large and going small. Well, that's easy. I just change the order of the keyframes, which I can do by dragging in the frame gallery, like this. So now the first frame is large and the second is small. Note the frame name is irrelevant here. It always displays the animation from the top frame downwards. So a quick preview shows it animating the other way. Also note that the animation is faster again now, and that it pauses for two seconds when small but that reflects the frame timing shown here. I'll just restore the original frame order. Let's see what happens if I fade the text on the first frame, using the transparency tool, to be almost entirely transparent, like this. Preview this, and you can see the wording now fades in, as well as enlarging and changing colour. Suppose I wanted to fade it back out again, back to the start position. Well, this is really easy, because I just have to copy the first frame, which I can do by selecting the first frame and clicking the copy button. So now I have three key frames. It starts small and faded out, moves to large and blue, and then back to the faded out position on frame 3, which is the same as frame 1. But on the preview you may notice the timings are not even but this reflects exactly the timing shown here. 2 seconds for frame 1 to 2, 
and then half a second back to frame 3, then two second delay before starting again. I can change the timing with the Animation Properties dialog, as shown before. If I want no pause between cycles, I just set the last frame to have a time of 0 seconds, like this, and preview again, so you can see it now cycles smoothly. Let's get more ambitious and include a photo. I'll just drag and drop a JPEG image onto my page from my file system. It's really important that you use JPEG photos only, and that you have them prepared at the exact right size and resolution. When you drag and drop a JPEG file onto Zara, this is exactly the file that will get embedded into the flash, so the JPEG file size really matters. Fortunately, it's easy in Zara to export your JPEG as any required size and resolution, and to optimize the quality to get the smallest possible file size. This is covered in other demo movies. What I want to do is fade this photo in at the same time as the Zara word fades out. So I've dropped this photo onto frame 2. Remember, I need to name the object because I want to animate it. So as before, click the Name button and give it a name. I want the photo to start small and really faded, so I'll resize it, position it, and adjust its transparency. So that's its starting position. I'll copy the photo and now move to frame 3. Using the Paste in Place option puts it back exactly where it was copied from. So now I'll adjust its size and transparency like this. Let's preview the result. You can immediately see the timing is not ideal, and here you can see that frame 2 takes just half a second, which is where the photo fades in. So I'll adjust the frame timings with the Animation Properties dialog. I'll set the first frame to be 1 second, the second frame to be 2 seconds. By the way, using the Apply button allows me to keep the dialog on screen while changing the selected frame making this process a whole lot quicker. And preview the result. This is much more like it, and you can see the photo fades in at the same time as the word fades out. So you can have any number of objects moving, changing size, fading in or out as you like. And as long as each has a unique name, Zara does all the hard work of creating the smooth animation. In this case, the photo enlarges to be outside the background but I can fix that quite easily using the Clip View function in Zara. On the last frame, select the Rectangle Background, and the Photo, and then the Clip View menu option. Now everything is clipped to the rectangle. Earlier we set up the timing of the last frame to be zero, so once it's faded in, it immediately starts the animation again. But as before, setting the last frame period to be two seconds ensures it pauses for two seconds before starting again. In fact, in the Animation Loop and Speed tab of the dialog, you can set whether it loops continuously or a set number of times. Finally, let's spice this up a bit more. On frame 2, I'm going to rotate the bitmap. It's mostly faded out, so not that easy to see, but I can adjust the transparency to make it a bit clearer. So now it's rotated on frame 2, but not on frame 3. So let's preview. Not bad for a couple of minutes' work, and just three keyframes. If you want to see the HTML required to embed this flash file into your web page, just click the View HTML button here. So, what can you animate? Flash supports a core set of features that can be transformed or tweened from one frame to another. You can move, enlarge or reduce, rotate, change colour and transparency of any object, vector graphics, text or photos, and that's about it. And if you look around the web, you find that's what most flash files do. Objects just whiz around the screen, sometimes enlarging, rotating or fading in and out. Here's an example showing the main transformations you can apply to objects from one keyframe to the next. There's more to creating flash files using Zara. We strongly recommend that you read the help 
and try some of the step-by-step -step tutorials in order to better understand it. In particular, for more advanced animations, it is necessary to understand object naming and the use of the name gallery, which has not been shown here.